And uh, here is the latest installment of Ezekiel Kralin's story about the two dogs, Flacco and Lucky, and so on. This is titled, No More Cowfish for You, Young Man, Ezekiel Kralin wrote. Email correspondence, January 19th and 20th, subject, No More Cowfish. Date, January 19th, afternoon. I just received a call from an unknown number, so I passed it through Google Screener, which requested whomever to describe the purpose of this rude disruption. My words, not theirs. Instead of the mystery caller hanging up at that point, the usual scenario, it spit out a stream of text, which I guess is the government's way of getting the info through. Google Screener says, Hi, the person you've reached is using a screening service from Google and will get a transcript of this call. Go ahead and say why you're calling. Transcripted reply. This is a pretty recorded message from the California Department of Social Services. Cowfish emergency alignments are ending February 2023. The last emergency allotment will be issued March 2023. This means household will no longer receive extra calc such because of the pandemic beginning April 2023. All house will continue to get their regular cow finish benefit, them out, which is the amount of positive onto their T-H-E-R-E EVT cards within the first 10 days of the month. As long as they remain eligible for the program, the confidential benefit amount is based on powerful size and circumstances. To update information on circumstances, contact the local town in social services office by calling one eight seven seven eight four seven three six six three or even our office located map. Cowfish C O W F I S H Cowfishfood dot org. The ending of search in written C A uh, space lotments is not considered a reduction to regular calf rashed. Calf rashed. I stayed here in a judge cannot order a payment of emergency allotments. Actually have stock. Now, further action is required. Thank you for listening to this message from the California Department of Social Services. The translation leaves much to be desired, but I got the gist of it. No more cowfish for Zeke after March of this year. Well, just a little. Maybe $22 worth each month instead of $220 worth. I don't know how I'll live without my cowfish. Re No More Cowfish, date January 19th, evening. Watson wrote, ah, This is hilarious, right up there with the garbled directions that come with Chinese implements. I replied, I imagine the Google screener bot did its very best to transcribe the voice of a Chinese-accented American English speaker. Watson wrote, Do cowfish swim with gefilte fish? I replied, only if it doesn't mind contracting regular calf rashes, which mangled phrase, I guess, means regular cash raises. I didn't notice the rate transcription quality option at the top until it was too late because I deleted the chat session. Damn it. I would have given it a D-. minus. Signed, Zeke K. Holmes. P.S. You're not acquainted with the food stamp subsidy, so you may not have figured out that cowfish and cow finish actually stand for Cal Fresh. Subject, JBL Beast is dead. Long live the Flintstones. Date, January 20, 2023, at 11.56 p.m. No more purgatory drama. Lugging the hefty gangster rap pig of Satan up and down the stairs. Free at last. Free at last. Thank Dagon Almighty, I am free at last. What did I say, Watson? That he wouldn't be able to hold on to it by his birthday, which is two days from now? Of course, he claimed it was stolen, though I suspect otherwise. This time around, he gave me a pair of matching speakers to charge. They look just like large rocks, so naturally I call them the Flintstone speakers. I'm sure you would too, Watson. They just beg the name. See picture. I bet he bartered them for the JBL Party Box 300. Imagine that. Trading a $500 speaker spectacular for a pair that couldn't have cost more than $55 new. Though at this point, his JBL was so badly banged up, its value was greatly reduced to just about zilch. Now, with such an expensive month, due to my having to purchase a passel of sleeping bags and doggy sweaters, I did not appreciate the zipper breaking on my only winter coat two days ago. I had it for over three years, and it still looks good. So I guess I shouldn't complain. 
However, I can't afford to buy a new one at this time. I'll try to repair the zipper. It's called a Sherpa jacket, which has a nice white fluffy inner lining and an attractive plaid-type fuzzy and thick outer shell with a hood. I decided my next winter coat will fasten with buttons instead of a zipper, but such an option was scant in my price range, 30 to $40. In fact, what few button-downs were available had lousy customer ratings. Of course, I can get by just fine wearing two sweaters instead of one, covered with one of two hoodies I recently purchased, but thanks to Deke, I need not have worried. For when he moved on, he left behind a few discarded items, including a sweater jacket that, get this, good doctor, had buttons instead of a zipper. See picture? Isn't that a lovely jacket? In pristine condition, it looks brand new. I imagine Deke dumped it because it ain't his style. Too gay in his dim-witted appraisal. Nothing but gangster rap style for my Nola bitch, and since he's held on to boat sleeping bag so far, the new one he got that's ultra warm and fluffy, and the last one I gave him that barely suffices for these icy chill nights, I guess to add that sweater jacket for the doggy's warmth would be redundant. So his trashing it in front of me is as if he read my mind that I needed a new winter coat, one with buttons instead of a zipper. This is the way of the shaman. When presenting you with a gift, they do so in an offhand manner, often making it look like they just happen to throw it on the ground in your presence, without ever first saying, Do you need this? I don't want it. Also intriguing is that I had fantasized yesterday, asking Deke to find a winter coat for me because the zipper broke on my present one, but then I said to myself, Nah, he'll just make a big complication over it, get the wrong size, or there'll be something else about it that will put me off, or even try to squeeze more moolah from me for doing this favor. It is heavy and toasty warm. At first I thought to hold on to it for a time when the pups had nothing for comfort, like they do now, and as the weeks pass, hopefully I'll have a growing collection of similar items that will serve in place of sleeping bags that I usually can't afford. But then I realized it's a perfect replacement for my Sherpa jacket, which will serve the pups quite well, never mind the zipper, and I don't really need a hood, as I wear a knitted watch cap when it's cold outside. Deke showed up this afternoon in a snit. I won't go into any details because it's the same old baggage of false accusations and insults. I don't know how he lost the cover for his smartphone, but it's a shame since here come the broken screen and glitches from dropping it a dozen times a day, blaming me, of course, for the shoddy outcome. Unless he has enough sense in his noggin to invest in a new cover. The rest of the meetup was calm until toward the end. And he laid down that excellent sleeping bag right off the bat so the mutts could be comfy and warm. I fed the little angels a meal and water and got to recline beside them for a good ten minutes before returning hovel. At first, Lucky was seated along one edge of the bag while his sister was sprawled out in the middle. Move Flacco further up so Lucky can have some room. He wants to lie down, said their master. I thought Lucky had ample space to do that, but I realized that's why he's still sitting up by my feet instead of lying down, patiently waiting for someone to notice. He's so polite and respectful toward his sister, he'd never dream of demanding she move. If worse came to worse, he'd just remain sitting there without so much as a yelp. That's how kind he is to her. He doesn't mind at all if she tries to push him away from my affections. Instead, he'll start massaging her shoulder with his teeth, which stills her immediately in doggy bliss while I scratch his back. Or he'll approach me from a different angle, so as not to be in her way, yet still receive my caresses. So I gently grabbed Flacco and slid her a foot farther up, then patted on the newly vacant spot and said to her brother, Here you go, Lucky. Get cozy. He then gazed down at my hand in hesitation, as if wondering whether or not Flacco would mind. It's okay, Lucky. Come on over. I assured the sweet love muffin, and so he did, and curled up between myself and his sibling as the warm rays of the sun bathed us all. Deke smiled down at us while this was going on, which revealed a kinder nature than he usually conveys. I don't think he knew I noticed that as my face was turned away from him and focused on his charges. Later in the day, a chill breeze kicked in. And when I stepped out again, asked Deke if I could throw the other sleeping bag over them, not knowing if he'd bite my head off in another burst of faux rage. To my surprise, he did not, and just said okay, 
But had he defied me, I would have simply returned upstairs, grabbed a child-sized sleeping bag, and brought it outside, and tossed it over the doggies, whether their master liked it or not. Then when it came time to leave a couple hours later, he went into another hissy fit, declaring no real friend would ever call the cops on him. And why do I keep accusing him of lying? Because all the time we've known each other, he's never lied to me even once. My response, Watson? That's the biggest lie you've said yet on top of all the others, Dick. I then wished him and the little quadrupeds a wonderful night, and as I walked toward the front gate, he hissed and fumed words that didn't quite reach my ears. But just before I entered Hotel California North, I turned back to him and called, God bless. So I'd say it was another excellent visit with my Cajun trickster. Overall, I've noticed for the past few months he rarely keeps me up late. That is past 10 o'clock, but usually departs around 7, 8, maybe 9 p.m., allowing me to get a truly good rest, easing into my nocturnal hours, watching a movie or some scary YouTube videos, listening to a podcast or browsing the interwebs, and then it's off to sleep I go, with low-volume scary tales wafting into my ears. I think perhaps the short days have shifted him into departing earlier, or maybe he's just being thoughtful by giving me that time for myself. While composing this missive, I've also been listening to Memo of the Weird, streaming live. Friday night has become my favorite time of the week, thanks to Marshall. And once more, I must say, in all capital letters, good riddance, JBL Party Box 300. May you never sully my doorstep again. Subject. I left something out from yesterday. Date. January. Nothing to do with Deke, but with low-life Scooter. When I stepped out to use the restroom sometime in the early afternoon, there he was, dressed in white pajamas and walking up the stairs. I involuntarily nodded my head in greeting, as I always do whenever I see another person in the hallway, not realizing till a split second later who it is. Damn it, I thought, as I proceeded down the side hallway with no further communication. A few week, uh, sorry, a few minutes later, upon returning hovel, there he was in my doorway about ten feet from where I turned the corner, and he raised his arm and what I assumed was a gesture to get my attention. I didn't look at him, but just vocalized a stern, Nope, and entered my room. I was busy tending to Deke and Pups, and didn't care for this disturbance, nor did I care to assist a vagrant stranger roaming the halls. If he had to relieve himself, too bad. I'm not here to unlock bathroom doors for whichever homeless person appears and should not be living here. Too bad. He can poop in a plastic bag if need be. Fortunately, he didn't call to me or, God forbid, knock on my door, so that was that. No point in complaining to the building manager, who's probably still in the hospital, or dead by now, anyway. Because I haven't crossed his path since I don't know who, but I think it was Kevin was carried off to the ambulance out front eight days ago. Make Carlson soon join him in the afterworld, so Scooter be driven away. Excuse me just a moment. That sounds like something um, something you might hear or say in a dream. Like a poetic line that might mean anything. May Carlson soon join him in the afterworld, so Scooter be driven away. It's like a hymn. <laughs> it's just a, or a translation from some other language. Something that you... I almost said imprecation for the dead, which, uh, you know, that's good, too. An imprecation for the dead. <laughs> 